Hi, this is Captain Jack from 96.7 The Eagle. You know, I take a lot of pride in showing support for our local law enforcement. Back the Blue isn't just a saying that's cool that you put on social media. It's a way of life. The men and women that wear the badge wear it 24-7. They are never truly off the clock. And for that, I say thank you. And with that, I present our new video series, Lessons from Our Dream Police, involving our local law enforcement. Some will be serious, and some will help us answer a question that you might think is a dumb question to ask an officer. We start with an episode on a serious topic. What should our kids do when they think they are being followed? If your kids are alone on their way home from school or are running to the store out with friends, do they know what to do if someone is making them feel uncomfortable? Watch this, share this, and hopefully you can learn a little something. This is Lessons from Our Dream Police. My name is Jillian Cheely. I am 17 years old and I'm a senior in high school. So I was at Mobile on Alpine. I was getting gas and I was just getting in my car afterwards and a guy, older guy, looked at me and just smiled and I figured he was being friendly so I smiled back and I get in my car on the driver's side and he looks in on the passenger side and kind of gives me a weird look and I was like, that's odd. So I call, I pull out, call my mom and then I tell her about it and she's like, oh, well, like, what did he look like? And I look in my rear view mirror and I'm like, mom, I tell her and I'm like, he's right behind me and he was tailgating me like super close to my car if I would have tapped on my brakes that he would have slammed into me. So I keep driving and I go to my school and I turn in the parking lot and he's like zooms in right behind me and then turns on the side road right there. So a little scary being there, but that's what happened. <laughs> One thing I wish I would have done was probably call the police because as I was like reading more on it and the stories that are happening, people like their advice is to call the police right away or take a picture because that freaks them out. My first instinct was to call my mom and not go home so they didn't know where I lived and go somewhere public where there'd be more people. Hopefully they lay off, which he did. You become more aware that wherever you are it can happen anywhere. So it's I'm now cautious about where I am alone and I try to go with someone everywhere I go. I'm Officer Lisa Hodges and I'm with the Rockford Park District Police Department. I am a patrol officer and I'm also with community relations for our police department. First of all, if you can, as kids, stay in a group with one another, not be separated and not be alone, that would be the best thing that you could do. Staying together, when you have multiple people together, bad guys aren't so often to want to have an encounter with more than one person, but a one-on-one, -on -one, they will take the chance. So if you can stay in a group, that's great. If not, if you're alone, then the first thing you need to do is pay attention to your surroundings. If you notice somebody following you right away, if you feel scared, you can always call 911. You will never get in trouble for calling 911. That is what 911 is there for. So with that in mind, keep your phone with you, but don't don't be distracted by using your phone. Don't be on Facebook. Don't be messaging your friends. Eyes up. You need to be looking around and paying attention. If you feel someone's following you, go to a place that has people there. Um, if you're out and about um, and let's say you're driving your car with your friends and you stop somewhere, you know, go to like a gas station or a McDonald's or places where, you know, there's going to be a lot of people around and be by those people and call 911. So, Always staying, you know, where there's people. Don't isolate yourself. That's one of the biggest things that we find with perpetrators. Once you're isolated, you become an easy target. Don't make yourself an easy target. Go to the places where you know you're going to be safe. And like I said, stay off your phone. You've got to pay attention to where you're going. Eyes up, look around, and if you feel that, then you need to act on it. I always tell people that if you have that feeling in the pit of your stomach, something's not right, you're right. So I think the first thing I would have done in your situation, the minute that you realized that he was behind you, I would have probably called 911. Mm -hmm. It would be the best thing for you because you're going to have that dispatcher on the line that's kind of monitoring you. Mm -hmm. So it'd be kind of like your mom on wheels <laughs> kind of following you along. And our 911 operators are awesome and amazing and they are taking down everything that you're saying. So the mm -hmm. best thing for you would have been just to have that phone in your lap, you know, so you're still hands-free driving. Even if you have to hold on to it, obviously you're scared. Mm -hmm. Something's not right. And that's what 911 is there for you mm -hmm. to make you feel safe and that we can have help coming to you immediately. You can be on that phone as you're still traveling, telling the dispatcher where you're at and keep on going onto your route wherever you're going or if you can't get to where you're going you want to go to that kind of place where there's going to be lots of people or, mm -hmm. or 
drive to the nearest police station, get to know where our police departments are at, or fire station for that matter. Mm -hmm. You can even drive to a fire station, um, and the dispatchers will let the fire guys know, hey, come out, this young lady is going to be pulling in. You know, she's really shook up right now, and we're going to get a police officer to you just as fast as we possibly can, so that way you're safe. So those are some of the things that you could do, and when you're pulling into your school, you can drive up to your front door of your school and get out and walk in. Don't feel like you got to park out in the parking lot and give the chance that this guy's going to stop right there, mm -hmm. you know, and for any altercation to kind of happen. So go into up to your school, leave your car there, and go in and tell the administrators what's happening to you. But at all times, I would stay on the phone with a 911 operator because that's happening right now, and we're able to get information. What the dispatcher's doing is everything you're saying they're telling us on the radio so the officers that are coming they're all hearing it and we're all coming and we're all going to be paying attention and hopefully with that type of situation we'll be able to stop this guy identify him and figure out what his intentions are or is he um, somebody that is some type of perpetrator that has done this in the past and then you know and if arrest needs to be made then that is exactly what we will do but very good job for being alert kudos to you for being aware of your surroundings thank you